Hi, welcome back. My name is Stephen and just in case you haven't been here before, I'd like to share with you my hobbies, mainly metal detecting, mudlarking and the things that I find during those two hobbies, upcycling, usually silver coins into rings. Now this video is about that last hobby, upcycling, and I'm going to be turning a silver gothic Victoria Florin into a coin ring, size U, with 24 karat gold on the inside. And I'm also, during the video, going to be telling you how you can get a coin ring for free. So I'll be explaining the process of what I'm doing, the reasons why I'm doing it, and also telling you how you can get a coin ring for free. So keep your ears open and I'll see you at the other end of the video with some more details. Obviously the first thing we've done here is to select the coin, which is a Gothic Florin, dated 1889 I think this one was, 87 I think. And then we've annealed it, now annealing it really means just to soften it with a little bit of heat, but if you overdo it the coin will start to melt. So it's about getting the temperature correct, I've had lots of practice at that now, and it's ready now to punch a hole in. I used to do this by eye, and you still can. However, it's better to get a dead accurate hole. So I now use what's called a self-centering punch. It lines up automatically, any size coin will go in, self-centers, and then you just push a punch through the coin. This makes the whole process so much easier. And because it's dead centre, even to the fraction of a millimetre, it means you get an even fold on the next stage. The centre punch that I've just taken out is going to be saved in my scrap tin. Just have to get this off the punch now, so just I'll use a rubber mallet. And then just give it a little drop and it pops off. And it's dead centre. It'll need a kneading again now and then we'll deburr it. That is taken any burrs off from where the punch went through just in case there's a slight fracture of the coin even though it was softened like this through kneading. If you're folding without the deburring you'll probably get the coin to split and we wouldn't want to ruin a coin and add to the scrap bucket. And there's the second go, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Then we need to fold it, but folding it the right way around so we've got the right design on the outside of the ring. And it needs to be 100% level with a nice ball bearing on the top, you'll see. Then I'll put that in my one ton press to fold it the first stage. This if, is where it's, if it's gonna split, it will probably split just here. Now to get a free coin ring, I do need some more coins. Anything from a British shilling up to a half crown or even a crown. And these are the coins I'm running short of. So if you send me three coins, which are identical, but they have to be silver. So please make sure you know your coins. After 1919, there was only 50% silver in British coins. And after 1946, there were no silver in any of the British coins, even though they look silver. So what I want is pre-1919 up to, and including 1919, that's sterling silver coins. No payment from you is required. I'll turn one of those coins into a lovely coin ring for you and my payment will simply be the other two coins to add to my stock which I then will sell and that's how I'll make my money back. Now you can see now I've done the first and the second stage of the folding, re-annealing 
and now it's ready for the final shaping. Just checking it because he wanted a size U and I've got to go another three sizes bigger in that center hole and I use that with a ring stretcher. This is a ring stretcher and I turn it a quarter of a turn each time just to make sure it's an even stretch and not going to turn all wobbly on me. So your free coin ring, once you've chosen three coins to send me, make sure you put your name and address, telephone number, contact me first so we can go through the details. Tell me what ring size you want, but I mean, whatever you do, don't put like a shilling or three shillings in the package and tell me you want a big U, X, Y or Z because a shilling won't stretch that far. It has to be the right coin for the right size. And I'm getting there and you can see now the ring has got a lovely shape to it. Now that's what's called a flat wall or straight walls. It's just a ring. There is another style which is called a fat tire and that is a wedding band shape, slight curve on it. They look really attractive on the bigger rings with wider bands. So what I'm going to do now is shape this into a fat tire because that's what Alan requested. And I've still got to come down two or three sizes. Anyway, more about the free coin ring. Once I've made you your free coin ring in return for keeping two of the coins for myself, all you need to provide back is the postage to cover the cost of the postage and the packaging and I'll send it back to you. I also am in, I'm in need of some scrap silver because I've now got a rolling machine where I can make my own silver sheet and silver wire for other ring projects and jewellery products from scrap. So, you know, if you've got some scrap silver that you don't want, we can talk maybe about doing an exchange for scrap silver in return for a free coin ring. We can work something out. Now I've been polishing, as you can see, sanding rather, I've been sanding the edge that has been cut, punched, and I'm finishing it off with a 10,000 grit on that cut edge, just to make sure I get a really nice, perfect shine. And I've got a lovely fold now, the fat tire fold, it's starting to look really nice. Now I'm putting the polishing wheel on. And although this was a dug up coin, it was in good condition. So I don't need to sand out any damage to the coin. I'm going straight on to the final finish, a high gloss shine, which is what I wanted. You can see there, look, that's the unpolished side and that's the polished side. So I'll do the whole thing. Then we move on to the electroplating. So Alan wanted some 24 karat gold as the liner to the coin. So there's the coin, all finished, clean. It's also been sterilized to make sure there's no grease, no fingerprints. And I've now got a gold suspension here. So it's gold which is suspended in this liquid to soak up onto this little pad then using an electrical current, we apply this onto the inside of the coin ring. You can see I'm completing a circuit there with two wires, a negative, and the actual tool I'm using is the positive, and it creates a really, really lovely finish. Let's have a look, just cleaning it up with a cloth and then voila, doesn't that look really nice? In fact, this video and photographs don't do it justice. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm sure Alan will be delighted.
Now maybe of course all you want to do is to own a coin ring from a coin that's been dug up either by you, me, or one that's been donated to me, a genuine dug up coin ring. You can either supply the coin or I will. If that's the case, contact me and we can talk about ordering one. If you'd like to see what I've already got for sale in stock, you can go to themanwiththehat.co.uk and you'll also find there my Roman posters to help you ID from that big chart all the Roman coins you find as you find them. Also, free with that for the moment is going to be an English monarch's hammered coins, which you can also use to identify your hammers. And finally, if you'd like to join my channel as a VIP member and have all the perks of being one of my supporters, then see the video description also. Until next detecting season, keep safe, keep happy and good luck. I'm Arthur Smith and I'm just sitting in my little garden feeling quite nice, just sitting here. We all know who wouldn't be. Yes, the man in the hat, Stephen. And what does Stephen do? He digs them up, pimps them up so you could wear them. And he's going to do that all the time. He's digging even as I speak, no doubt.